But one tip for anybody building a van. If you're on the northeast coast of England, don't do it in winter. It's miserable. You may notice for the last video and probably for the foreseeable videos, I've always got my hood up jacket on freezing cold. It's awful. All right, enough whinging from me. Last week, I finished the floor and the framework, and by the end of this video, we're gonna be much closer to getting back to what this channel is all about, outdoor photography. Right, let me show you my plans for the day. So this here, this is my L-shaped sofa slash bed. You can see that I've got bolts attached now to all of this extruded aluminium, which I didn't film because I cannot tell you how boring and tedious it was. But my plan is to measure all of these and cut pieces of wood that will sit inside of there with carpet on, and then that will make for a nice clean surface for my cushion slash mattress slash whatever to sit on. Okay, you get the idea. I have a tendency to waffle on and I don't want to give away too much of what I'm going to do to this van in this video. You'll have to watch it, but right now it's all about getting these panels measured, cut and carpeted. This is the first stage in my L-shaped sofa bed. And I'd also like to give a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. If you need a website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton. Oh, all right, first one's in, and that is really nice and flush to the uh, to the railings here, to the aluminium. Now you might be wondering why I bothered carpeting them, because you're not gonna see these, this is just gonna be what the bed sits on, the mattress. Uh, carpet is basically for two reasons. One is, uh, is so that they don't rattle. I don't want any rattles in the van, and if it was wood on top of these screws here, these bolts, yeah, it's just gonna rattle and carpet also will offer a bit of friction when the mattress is on top so the mattress won't slip side off. That's my thinking, but uh, that, <laughs> I'm actually really impressed. Can't believe how well that one fits. So now I'm just popping in my bed panels and they all fit beautifully, apart from this last one which needs a bit of a whack with a mallet. The panels are all just gonna be loose, they're not gonna be fastened down, so if I need to I can pop them out again. Apart from the rear panels, they are going to be fastened down because this whole rear storage unit needs to be secure. I don't want some moron breaking into the van and just nicking my bag simply by popping out the panels. So one of the minor detail that I uh, forgot to mention is uh this little piece here. So this piece, which sits in this corner here, that is gonna be hinged so you can lift it up. I don't know if you can see that very well, but so you can basically lift up this corner because down here is the access point to the wheel jack. Um, so if I get a flat tire, I need to access this corner to basically change the tire. So I really had to think about that when planning the build. My philosophy is everything with the van and everything in the van and everything about the van and all aspects of the van, camper or not, will fail. Therefore, I need to be able to access something, change something, move something. So yeah, yeah, there we go. So this is the most important storage compartment in the van. And the reason for that is because it demonstrates how seriously I am taking the usage of every square centimeter. Pencil, it fits. But it's not just pencils that will fit on the shelf. It's cables, salt and pepper, coffee, all little bits and pieces, cutleries, knives and forks, they'll all fit in here, so long as they are no thicker than about two centimeters. So this is a bracket which is pretty typical to what I'm using to support the bottoms of the shelves and the furniture and anything basically because you can just drill holes into it and then bolt it straight to the framework. 
But what I'm doing in this instance, anything that I think is at risk of rattling, I just get a piece of self-adhesive foam and I just stick it to where the bracket will make contact with the aluminium framework because that is a rattle risk. So my first storage compartment is almost complete and this compartment is right next to the battery which is why I've carved all of these slats in the inside wall to allow airflow because the back of the battery has quite a big fan on it. This is a carpeted panel, essentially I'm going to finish off the side of the storage unit in exactly the same way I finished off my bed and seat platform by putting bolts in the channels of the extruded aluminium and then cutting a piece and basically slotting it in. However, it will need to be secured to those bolts, whereas the ones on the bed, they just pop out if necessary. I don't want that to happen, obviously, because when I'm driving, there's a chance that the panel is just gonna pop off. So I've got some of this material here. This is just like steel, I don't know what you call it, it kind of looks like a bike chain. It's just a thin steel that's got various holes along the, uh, well, running all the way through it. What you can do is you can just cut lengths of this, like so. And then that is very basically a very strong and flexible bracket. I hope you're enjoying the van builds so far. I, I know it's a world away from my usual photography content, but I am enjoying it and I hope you are too and you're interested to see how it's going. One thing I wanted to point out was um, I've kind of built storage space into the framework. So the idea being that I build the frame and then I can panel the frame, which will give me my storage units. And you've kind of seen that being built over here with these two tiny units. I just wanted to point out one small detail. And that is that rather than boxing the back side of the unit, the inside at the back, rather than panelling and boxing that off, I'm actually using the interior trim as the back of the cupboard. And what that means is I have to notch out little pieces of wood just like this to make as the floor to squeeze into the tiny space. But it's going to give me an extra few inches of depth in that cupboard. Now this is just one or another example of the attention to detail that I am kind of... I don't know, demonstrating or paying attention to when, when building this van. For me, things like this, every, you know, taking pride in every single square centimetre of the build, whether or not it's visible, that's what's gonna make it stand out, hopefully, as a really good van build. Okay, so very exciting day today. Not only do we have fairly decent weather to work in, but I've had a delivery. These are all of my internal cupboard doors. And I've ordered these online and these are fantastic. It's all edge banded, they're really cheap. I think this piece here cost me about three or four pounds plus delivery, so absolute bargain. And the finish I've gone for is a nice rusted steel for that industrial vibe, <laughs> vibe, that industrial feel that I think is gonna fit really well uh, with how the van is going so far. I didn't trust myself to make my own internal doors why bother? You know, I do not have the skills, but this, this is uh, perfect and should fit nicely 
exactly where it's meant to be. All I've got to do is fit the hinges, fit the latches, and we're good to go. main doors here in the van they've all been test fitted you'll notice I haven't put the latches on yet I wanted to get the hinges all set in place before I go ahead and start putting on the latches and I am so happy so happy with that <laughs> they're like millimeter perfect so so far the doors are a success um, I don't know I'm still kind of undecided on the hinges I think the hinges look cool they're a bit big but I, I don't know they kind of look uh, manly and whoa, rugged and off-road and oh, you know all that sort of stuff. <laughs> I don't know, don't know why I'm trying to be manly here, but I guess I guess I am compensated for something with this van and this uh, these hinges. So. <laughs> right, anyway, now I've got to take off all the doors and fit the latches, and that makes me nervous. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Ah, so there we go. First three drawers, or cupboard doors rather, are done, and I'm very happy, very happy. It wasn't as difficult as I thought to actually uh, notch in the, uh, the the latch here. So I think the one thing that makes anything stand out above anything else, whether it's your photography or you know, a van build like this, the one thing is attention to detail. Those details that 99.9% .9 of people will never notice. But the more you can pay attention to those details, the better the finished product will be. And a great example is this tiny, tiny piece of foam. Can we see that? I'm gonna stick this to the latch, the door stop. Because at the minute, when I close the door, it's plastic on wood hear that and although it's a really nice uh, really nice fit it just needs that little something so I'm gonna stick this piece of foam onto the latch and we'll get a quieter close we'll get more resistance which means when it's closed it's not rattling around by a millimeter and everything basically means it won't rattle when we're going over bumpy ground so it really is a tiny tiny thing but it means now that when you close the door you actually have to push it a little bit to push it uh, and then it clicks. So that tiny piece of foam is giving resistance against the door, which means, look at that, no rattle. It's not, you know, there's not that millimeter gap. It's just, it's really, oh, it's really tight. And same goes for this one as well. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> I managed to get my drill stuck, wedged between the framework and the floor. And it seems the, the further into this van build I get, the more difficult it's becoming. Because the space is becoming more and more awkward. So I'm having to get the drill into places that it doesn't fit. And I'm, I'm having to squeeze into tight corners and get all kinds of awkward angles. <laughs> Without a doubt, that was the worst job on this van so far. The room for error was literally one millimeter, but the result is quite a nice drop down hatch and the fit is just beautiful. I mean, it fits 
Wow, you couldn't go a millimeter any other way, left, right, up, down. That is absolutely bob on. So this is the slam lock that I'm gonna be installing on this inside hatch, which gives access to the rear storage. As you see, it's got a lock on. It's very heavy duty, so it should stop or at least massively deter uh, Billy Bob the burglar who decides to break in and wants access to the back. So um, with this, hopefully it'll be much more difficult a job. Uh, so get this installed. This is from the same place where I purchased the aluminium. So should be uh, pretty simple and straightforward to install and should all fit nicely. So now that we have the slam lock panel and I've also created this internal panel here, we have created this completely separate rear compartment. So this rear compartment is completely separate from the front. Apart from this tiny channel here, which I'm keeping open, um, but again, that doesn't pose any kind of security risk. That's just for, you know, long objects, umbrellas, long tripods, that kind of thing. So yeah, very, very happy. So that's the drop down uh, hatch almost complete. I'm just waiting on some aluminium trim to finish off and strengthen the edges. And I still need to cut down these carriage bolts, but more or less it's done. So now I'm gonna look at the inside kitchen side table area. The, the, place, the place where you make tea and coffee. My kitchen worktop is going to be made from 18mm ply and divided into three sections. Two sections towards the back of the van are going to be lift up hatches, but the bigger section towards the front of the van, well that is going to be a slide out tabletop. The way I'm going to do that is with these heavy duty sliders. Now heavy duty sliders, nothing special about that, they're quite common. This one in particular, when on its side, will hold about 150 kilos, which is overkill, obviously. But what's special about this slider is that it's designed so that it can be laid flat so it's much lower profile if i was to mount it this way with the table <laughs> too high it looks silly but you can lay them flat and when it's flat it will actually hold about 35 kilos which is more than enough you know the weight of the wood a laptop and a cup of coffee is going to be about i don't know 12 kilos maximum It 
works. It works really nicely. I've got here a 10 kilo kettlebell, which um, I've just used for weighting this down. So I can use this as a reference point for this to make sure my angles are straight and proper, which they are. So now we're gonna fully extend this table and I'm gonna put this 10 kilo weight on the table. If it breaks, I'll cry. But I'm never gonna have more than 10 kilos on this table, no way. Cup of coffee, bacon sandwich, laptop hard drive, what's that? Four kilos max, probably more like three. Let's see. Even throw on a camera, that might take it up to five. And a lens, six, all right. Here we go. 10 kilos. <laughs> there we go. I would say that that is a success. So originally I was uh, actually going to paint this surface um, and then I uh, got reminded by my lovely wife about this um, self-adhesive vinyl you can get for furniture and um, shelves and tables and things. I had a quick look and I got this roll of uh, matte copper vinyl and it was six quid. Six quid! It would have cost me about 70 or 80 pounds to paint the table. So I finished off the other half of the table in the same vinyl and laid the pieces down to see how they all fit together and I really wasn't happy with all of the joins so I decided to add some black edge trim to the, uh, to the table in the hope of getting a much cleaner join between the different pieces. Desperately unhappy with the finishing on these two lift up hatches, I actually decide to lose the copper vinyl and replace it with black, which will hide all of the defects that I've caused with the table by adding the black trim. So I'm hoping now with the black on black for a much cleaner finish um, or a much more forgiving finish, shall we say. So, I can almost taste it. I can almost taste the freedom. As soon as we get our freedom back, baby, we are going on a road trip. This van is so close to completion. Thank you guys for sticking through the video this long. I know it's been an epic one. We must be at 25 minutes by now. Um, but yeah, it's complete. The bed is in, the mattress is in. And what I've done, the way I've sort of designed the bed and the mattress is to leave access to all of the side compartments of the trim of the van, all of the rear trim, because there's loads of cubby holes and cup holders and all sorts of handy usable space. We have access to all of that, so that's great. Very happy with the van build so far, apart from one thing that I am not happy with, and that is the finishing of the table. Man, I tried, tried to get a perfect finish. Functionally, works like a dream, right? But it looks, the back end anyway, the back end, it just looks so slapdash. And I haven't got the carpentry skills to get a perfect finish. So I need, I'm basically, I need, a, I need a mate who does carpentry or something, someone who can help me do a decent tabletop. So that'll probably be the first thing I change. 
Um, yeah, what else? What else? What else? The cushions. So the cushions. I was nervous the cushions would be too thick. They're 10 centimeters thick. But there's this, you know, you need that. There's, you need the comfort. Comfort is a high priority. So they need to be thick. If they're too thin, yeah, they look great. But they're not comfortable. So I, I took a risk and went for thicker, more comfortable uh, sort of foam. And I tell you what, it's paid off. I wouldn't want to go a millimeter higher, but it's paid off. It looks great. It is super comfortable, like mega comfortable. So very happy with the bed. I haven't finished this side panel down here. That is going to be next week's video. Next week, we're going to do the lighting, the electrics, the battery, the 12 volt accessory, the God, the diesel heater, which I am dreading, by the way. And pressure's on because we are now in real time. Hello, everybody. Welcome to mid-March. So we are real time, so yeah, that's gonna be fun. But yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is when the van build's complete, I'll make a like a tour video where I talk about things in more detail. I'm not showing many details of things, I'm just kind of showing them work. So we'll we'll get that done. Um but all in all, very, very happy. We just we just need our freedom back, man. We just need it not to be illegal to go for a day out. <laughs> and that's coming soon. Um so yeah. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you don't know who Squarespace are, maybe you're new to the channel, maybe you've not followed me before, but I, I'm, I've been sponsored by Squarespace for many years and they're fantastic. Uh, basically, if you want your own website, maybe you're building a camper van and you want a blog about that camper van, or you want to have images and galleries, maybe you want to sell accessories that you make, that kind of thing. Well, you'll need a website. And if you can't build your own website, which is incredibly complicated and complex and can be eye-wateringly expensive if you use a professional web designer, well, you can do it yourself using Squarespace and their online templates where you drag and drop uh, you know, whatever media or content you want into your own website. It's very intuitive, very easy to do. I've done it myself. And it's fantastic, you can even register your own domain and if you get stuck, there is 24-7 customer help. So get on the phone, give them a bell and I'm sure they'll be able to help you out. So if you do want that website, go to squarespace.com forward slash heaton and give it a free try. If you like your free trial and only, by the way, only if you like it, you can use the offer code heaton and get 10% off your first purchase. So, there we go. <laughs> what an epic. What an epic. So join me next week where I no doubt get hurled with abuse in the comments for my electrical work. I'm not an electrician. Leave me alone. So I'll see you guys next time. Yeah, bye bye.